Hello, I am going to discuss how gender studies evolved with time, that is, historical evolution of gender studies. I will share my screen with you. All right. So we can see I am beginning with the quote, gender and identity continuously constituted in time, instituted in an exterior space through a stylized repetition of acts. This is by Judith Butler. And Judith Butler conveys that gender is a performance. We are continuously performing our gender our gender identities. Now, some people would adhere to the conventional, socially prescribed norms of gender behavior, gender roles, gender performances, and some adhere to the changing notion of gender or the diverse notion of gender, more and more inclusive towards gender. You can see some pictures out here. These are actually paintings. So the first painting depicts that women are in a kitchen space and these spaces are specifically reserved for women. So you can see that the kitchen uh, that the woman is cooking and the other women are busy serving the men. So the domestic space is only for women, where which is a very important space, but where male responsibilities, male involvement is very, very less. They are only in into taking the services and commanding. In the second painting, you can see that how uh, this woman is portrayed or painted, depicted to be adorning herself, looking at the mirror and adorning herself. Then similar painting, her painting. Fourth, this, this painting is very famous. This painting is by uh, Raja Ravi Verma. And you can see that book is very sens sensuously depicted. And the last painting, this is a miniature painting, Indian miniature painting, uh, almost from 16th century, 16th to 17th century. And this painting depicts that the woman is longing, longing for her lover. And this painting represents uh, a rag in Indian music, a classical rag. But how the rag was con conceived by uh, male musicians, that is also a matter of uh, question. So you can see that the woman is uh, lonely. She is in a forest and in, in according to Indian representations, women are always represented as vulnerable bodies and vulnerable mind. Okay, so in all these paintings, you know, most of these paintings, you will see that the that, that the women are performing. The women are performing the expected roles. The women are performing their bodies, the bodily performances which are expected out of them. Now, gender studies is actually led by women's studies and feminist studies. So when it comes down to the point of understanding that what are the uh, differences between masculine and feminine roles, we get to understand that how these roles became as cultural standards and how these standards started to produce knowledge, how they started to form the base of the knowledge. You know, as a child keeps growing up, the child keeps on, uh, you know, keeps on 
aligning either with the masculine role or the feminine roles. So the child observes and then, you know, learns. And then these masculine and feminine roles are propagated by the society as, as a form of knowledge. Now, the next is women's and men's interactions in the social sphere also becomes important, that how men and women are interacting. So if I go back to these paintings, and especially the first painting, you see that there is an interaction happening between men and women. They are exchanging certain tasks. They are exchanging certain roles, not not roles exactly, but they are exchanging. Uh, they are they are indulging in an interaction, not direct interaction, but an indirect interaction. The woman serving the husband, or the male figures, and the male figures accepting it, receiving it. So it again becomes. A process of interaction and this interaction has continued for centuries and when women's studies start to criticize these gender specified roles they start to question about the concept of gender and that is how women's studies convey conveys that gender is actually a socio-cultural construct. So gender studies started to grow or emancipate, but the concept of gender started to be questioned. The gender roles started to be questioned by the 1960s in US. So Betty Friedan's feminine mystique is very, very important in this regard because it talks about the importance of professional lives of women. Then with, with the emergence of second wave feminism, gender, concept of gender uh, received diversified attention. So second wave feminism exposed systematic racial sexism. So, you know, it, it started to focus or engage with uh, oppression or domination of women across race, across nations, across societies, across culture. And the other disciplines started to interfere, started to collaborate, to understand that how gender is a sociocultural construct. Then there were uh, legislature, legislative reforms, uh, where which which were passed by the nineteen sixties, and uh, they become an important contribution towards the emergence of the discipline of gender studies. Then, you know, these are some shots from the second wave feminism where feminist feminists are act, are voicing for their legal rights of abortion contraception okay, to consume contraceptive pills and safe legal abortions for women then they came out with the slogan personal is political so in the personal sphere how how women are expected to be seen, how women are expected to behave, it is very much a political matter. It has political implications, it has cultural implications. So, when we talk about women's studies or feminist studies, we get to engage with patriarchy and how this patriarchy controlled uh, the idea of sex, uh, sexualities, and gender identities. And when we talk about the uneven dynamics or uneven matrix, the uneven distribution uh, of labor, of labor in a society, we tend to think of 
gendered as a more uh, sociocultural construct rather than something which is natural. So since 19, again from 1980s, you know, because of active or radical feminism, gender studies received newer possibilities, newer thoughts, it started to become more and more inclusive. People started to question the masculine and feminine roles, the concept of masculinities and femininities. Then, with the emergence of feminist studies, as they started to, you know, as feminists started to question or raise doubts about the concept of gender, which is a sociocultural construct, they started to raise awareness of self and subjectivity. They started to question that the identity is not limited. One's identity is not limited. It is extremely fluid. It keeps changing. It keeps elongating. Then the studies, gender studies, brings attention to the inconsistent expectations of gender roles. They try to convey that uh, the roles ascribed for men and women in a, within a social structure is not practical, it is not rational, because again, men and women are viewed in terms of capabilities and capacities, which is not healthy for a growing society. Then next is how, you know, gender studies have diversified throughout, throughout, uh, throughout the years, upcoming years from 1960s. It was all because of second wave feminism, which uh, started to consider women from all races, from all classes. And when attention was paid on women's roles in the household and in the economic dimension of a society, people started to think in more inclusive manner about gender studies. Okay, And it started to think about the femininities and masculinities across, across the globe, across cultures. Now, as you can see, I have posted a brief write-up. This, this is from the journal, Indian Journal of Gender Studies, which has laid down its objectives that what they try to achieve so it is a contribution in the holistic understanding of family, community, and a wider polity. So in this system of wider polity, you know, how men and women interact and how gender identities are conceived become very important. Then, yes, gender studies definitely gives way to the analysis of complex power structure and the asymmetries. Asymmetries mean, means the inequalities in gender relations. So it is not just women or about women. It is also about women's studies also that the way to understand gender not as something constant, but a volatile notion. Now, this is a picture from a screenshot from, uh, from the journal Gender and History, which has issued a special call for papers. And you can see that how they have divided the subtopics. So how gender identities or people under the garb of gender has been segregated through labor, race, 
in education, in sports, over the course of life, as a political strategy, as a religious practice in urban in, in urban societies, and how gender uh, discrimination continued in the colonial period. Now, I would like to end with a quote. Gender identity is our internal response to a social construction that attempts to make a connection between a personal person's biological makeup and their eventual role stream. So, people or men and women kept following their roles defined by history. And they kept over-exaggerating the biological makeup, the determination of sex, which is a setback for a growing society and for a growing economy. I hope uh, you have enjoyed session. Thank you.